a Chattanooga native on the Los Angeles music scene, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I know now you're wanting to know, okay, who's this Chattanooga native? You consider yourself a Chattanooga? Well, of course you do. Of Romeo course. Johnson, ladies Absolutely. and gentlemen, went to what, Brainerd High School? Went to Brainerd High School. <laughs> You're in the music business. I yes, mean, sir. big time music business. So tell us kind of briefly what happened to get you headed that direction. Uh, well, I was born and raised here, Chattanooga in, in Washington Hills. My parents uh, raised us all in church. So, of course, I started off singing in church choir. And uh, my mother sings. Uh, all my siblings are musically inclined. Mm -hmm. um, I'm the youngest, so it was inevitable that I was going to get into music in some degree. But um, it really started to uh, become serious, I think, around age 15. I asked my mother to buy me a bass guitar. Um, I taught myself to play and with uh, the help of my friend Sam Sims. Mm -hmm. And um, it just bit me, you know. I, I was like, this is really what I, I love, this the stage thing, you know. And I played that, put a couple of bands together right here in town. Yeah. I was a um, bass player for the Brainerd High School Jazz Band. And I think my junior year in high school, I decided to sing in the talent show. No one really knew that I could sing. And um, I got a little more attention from the ladies. So I, <laughs> uh -huh. I, I switched over for a minute. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I just loved it. I loved singing. <laughs> and, and then you were bitten by the bug, and you took off and went to California. I took off and went to California. Yeah, my mind was, uh, actually, my mind was made up in, yeah. in my junior year. This is what I want to do. I, I knew I wasn't going to grow tall enough to be in the NBA. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> I was like, I wanted to play ball. But, um, yeah. Play music, play music. Yeah. Chicks you know. like musicians, too. There you go. <laughs> yeah, now all the athletes want to be musicians. Yeah, but, that's true. Yeah, I made my decision, and I knew that's what I was going to do. I was going to pursue music. Yeah. And, matter of fact, we got some pictures, guys, if you want to go through them. You've, you've done it in a big way, too. God, uh, I mean, we're seeing pictures of uh, Quincy Jones mm -hmm. and lots of other people, like Absolutely. Janet Jackson. Yes. Matter of fact, you were the, uh, I think you're one of the few people that's ever performed with, right, mm -hmm. both Janet and Michael? Yes, I'm the only singer to ever tour with Janet and Michael, yes. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. awesome. How, how were you affected by Michael's death? Oh, the same as everyone else, but um, being, knowing him and being around him, I'm sure, you know, it, it made it a lot more painful for me. Uh, and for anybody who's been around him, mm -hmm. because you kind of have to be around Mike to really understand him, you know, and to really see him as um, as the human being that he was, not just the butt of a joke or a character. Yeah. 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 Did he teach you anything? That's probably an oxymoron for a question. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. In all actuality, all of the people that I worked with taught me something. You know, I'm one of those. Pe I'm a sponge. You pick up. I'm a sponge. That's what you learn. Absolutely. I'm a sponge, but of course, Michael's work ethic was through the roof. Um, I learned to give 100% at all times. Every run through at rehearsal, you would think there were thousands of people in the audience. Yeah, yeah, that's where it's it. got to be. He if gave you, it because if you don't do that, you're shortchanging the people who come you to see so you. You're right. You're right. And you develop that habit, so you end up shortchanging yourself in the performance as well. Who's one of the best young, maybe undiscovered performers right now, you think? Undiscovered? Yeah, or, or maybe they're just beginning to, to be discovered. You know, is there, is there, are, are there a number of those kind of folks around? I think so. I mean, but, you know, the, my favorites are, are somewhat discovered. You know, I think our, I think our homeboy, Usher Raymond, is, oh, is amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, he's one of the best. Um, you when know, he gets better, too. Man. He must be paying a lot of attention. Usher's just, you know, Usher's another one of those people that, you know, it was, he's born with a gift and he took it seriously, you know and he honed in on it. Yeah. We're going to take a little break and when we come back we're going to talk, you, you're also a vocal coach. Yes sir. Uh, and you've done lots of other things. We'll talk about that in just a couple minutes, alright? Absolutely. Don't, don't go anywhere. I'm not going we're going to be right back with Romeo when this and that continues. Welcome back, young man from Chattanooga that's making it big in the music world, Romeo Johnson, and he's a home visiting uh, mama. That's right. And uh, always got to come home see mama. Got to come see mama. D does she ever get on you for anything you've done, either on stage or lyric-wise, if songs or anything like that? You know, with lyrics and my performances, I'm, I'm usually pretty tasteful. Uh, with a couple of the reality shows that I did recently, I lost my temper a couple of times and said yeah. it. A couple yeah. of not so nice words. Uh oh, uh oh. Matter of fact, tell me about those. Uh, there were two. Oh, yeah, R roll some footage if you will, please, guys. We've got some stuff here. You did what was it? A uh, couple of reality shows with P. Diddy? Yes. Um, uh, Star Maker was yeah. one, and Making His Band is the other, where I was uh, 
the vocal coach, vocal director, and uh, coach to Diddy, coach to the kids, to the uh, contestants. Now, for people who don't know, what is that? A vocal, vocal coach. coach yeah. uh, a vocal coach is a lot like a basketball coach, a football coach, whatever. We take uh, someone who has natural talent, natural ability, and show you how to um, how to make it reach its peak, how to fine tune it. You know, um, I don't like to try to approach being a music teacher mm -hmm. uh, as much as a vocal coach. So basically, I'll take people who have uh, raw talent or some you know some past in music and want to pursue it and show them what they need to what they need to do to bring it up to par and beyond. In, in a way it seems to me like with all the people that you've worked with and performed with and everything uh, are you freelance? Because it, it, it seems like you are in a sense. Yes. It's, uh, it's called, we call it independent contractor or whatever. Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Anything coming up in the very near future? A lot. A lot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Quickly he says a lot. A lot. Yes. A lot going on. I'll say this, you know, um, I, I pray a lot for God to put the right people in front of me to be an example. Yeah. And in the last few years, he's I've been in close contact with Queen Latifah, with P. Diddy, you know, people whose work ethic I so admire and I yeah. study what they do that makes them successful. And uh, it's about just time management, you know. So I try to I try to get the most out of my 24. Oh, I think it's awesome. I, I mean, you're doing the right thing, but somewhere along the line, you need to slow down. For instance, what would you, what do you do to relax? I like to drive. I like to drive in LA, it's beautiful, so a lot of times I just let really? my top down and <laughs> boom, I'll just cruise. Yeah, but of course I have to do it late at night when it's not a lot of traffic. Yeah, yeah, that could. Yeah, but that relaxes me though, putting on music and driving. Do you have a favorite piece of music that you love to hear over and over, maybe you have for 10 or 20 years or just a month? I have so many. Just, uh, yeah, depending yeah, you'd on my have mood. To. You've probably got a million of them. A million, me. yeah, and it just depends on the mood that day. It could be a number of different things. Yeah. yeah. You know, that's the great thing I love about music because one day you're in a real yes. weird mood. Next day, nice and calm. Yes, and, and there's something always... to apply to each one of those. Yeah, yeah. You're right. Does it make it harder on people like you to, you know, to get the right music, the right thing for the public out there? Is it changing a lot? That can be a problem if you're that type of artist. Um, I try to figure out who my demographic is and just stay true to me yeah. and cater to them. Yeah. And that's the guaranteed way to be happy, you know. Yeah, I do too. You know, it's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you. When you come back to visit Mama, come by and see us again. Now. Absolutely, I will. I'll call her and talk to her if I have to. That's right. <laughs> by the way, we have a website, right? Uh, or they may have already... Oh, I'm sorry. Have you got a website so we can tell people where to go Absolutely, for it? I do. It's very simple. It's RomeoJohnson.com. RomeoJohnson.com. Can't That's get any simpler than that. Can't get any simpler. That's a good way to be, too. Thank you. It's your pleasure. <laughs> Thank Come you. My pleasure. In just a moment, we're going to talk about Big Brothers, Big Sisters. Don't go away. Thank you.